desperate for my broad beans. You're not having them. <laughs> Morning guys, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma, these are my allotment diaries. I vlog all about my allotment plot here in South London. I'm in my fourth year and I started as a complete gardening novice. So if that sounds like you and you want to see someone just getting on with it, giving it a go, getting stuck in, whacking stuff in the ground, then maybe I'm the person for you. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. I've also got other ways to follow me down below. And now that all that is out the way, hello, how are you all doing? I am buzzing this today on Monday because on Friday last week, I was made creator, YouTube creator on the rise, which meant that I appeared in the trending page of YouTube for 24 hours. Um, I got a little blue badge by my name saying creator on the rise. It was just an amazing thing to be recognised by YouTube um, in that way because I know it doesn't matter and I know the numbers don't matter and everything but I've been making these videos for nearly four years now and like I have no valid, I have no boss to answer to, like it's all myself I'm completely self-employed I do all my tax returns myself I do you know it's all on me basically and kind of have like YouTube recognize that I have done well and my my numbers are doing good and I'm on the rise it's just amazing it feels like a promotion or a little bit of a pat on the back from your boss really so it just felt really amazing and I'm so thankful to YouTube for choosing me I know it's like through the algorithm and stuff as well but I mean how amazing how amazing and it's just a massive achievement so thank you to every single one of you who has subscribed to my channel I've got over 21,000 followers now I think I started the year with about 13,000 um, and I've got over 21 now which is just amazing so glad that you enjoy my little allotment diaries and um I'll get on with it, I've got some exciting stuff to do today, so I'm excited. Itching to get down here today. So it's a lovely sunny day here in South London today, which is just amazing. I was absolutely buzzing to get here today. Um, and I see that last time I was here, I actually weeded a lot of my plot and it's made such a big difference. So if you're feeling a little bit disheartened or a little bit, I don't know, like behind or anything, just take some time to weed because I tell you what, it lifts your mood and it makes your plot look absolutely incredible. Like I feel so on top of everything now and all I've done is removed a few weeds. It's amazing. I just want to talk a little bit about cheating. Um, cheating with your crops now I think a lot of a lot of the time when you're starting out on an allotment plot especially this for me how I felt this is definitely how I felt personally if you're not sowing everything from a seed you kind of feel like you're cheating um, and that's just not the case guys it's just not the case it's okay to go out and buy plug plants actually they're really reasonably priced at the moment so when I was in B&Q yesterday I picked up couple of these which are broad beans they're one pound 75 each and you get four or five pretty well grown broad beans um which is amazing um it's it's such a good price and if you haven't managed to germinate or the slugs have got more this is just a great thing to whack in the ground so i'm going to whack in some more broad beans today just because some of mine have been eaten um and they were so cheap and I just thought why not it's okay to buy plug plants they do so many at the moment as well they've got peas cauliflower broccoli sprouts so if you haven't sown any of that or you don't have the room to do it go and buy them as plug plants they're only a couple of pounds so I protected my broad beans with shells crushed shells um, and they've done really, really well against the slugs and snails, actually, because I can't see very much slug and snail damage. I think the thing that killed the broad beans is the frost, the hard frost that we had. I don't think they were quite strong enough. It's a lie. It's a lie. Everything I said was just a lie. It's just all lies because they have got to them. They have got to them. It's just because some of them have grown quite big anyway, despite the damage. But like this one here, he seems to have really struggled with it. So everything I just said was a lie and just forget it. Also this one's gone but I think he was gone before. This one's had frost damage but I think he's coming back to life. And this one miraculously is coming back to life from pretty much nothing. Actually growing new leaves. Unbelievable. He is our miracle broad bean he is. So I think I was right. Oh, who's that? It's the robin. It's all excited because I'm about to dig in the soil and he knows that means worms for his breakfast. Um, so that's the update on the shells. 
I'm, I'm really glad that I brought more now to whack in because I think it's probably going to need a few more whacked in here so we're just going to do another row and replace the ones that have died really and then I'll protect it again with the shells we'll have to see it that's all I've got for protection at the moment I need to get another bag of strolch I think that's on my list so when they come in a pot like this all together best thing to do get rid of a label hold on to it all like that tip it upside down like that squeeze it a little bit see the roots coming out the bottom just give it a bit of a squeeze and a wiggle and it all comes out look at those roots and then what you can do is you can just gently sort of start to break them apart so break the roots up a bit like that and they should just start to come apart because they've been in such a small pot all together you know they're friends now they don't want to leave their mates so it's it's encouraging them you know you've got to go it alone there we go so he's happy he's got a big root system on him now so he'll survive for as long as the slugs don't get him he'll, he'll survive anyway Just gently sort of google them apart as long as they've got loads of roots on him like that they should be all right in theory we never know <laughs> think when you're protecting crops from slugs and snails sometimes if you just like literally protect around the plant um, it's not as good protection as like protecting the whole bed because the slugs and snails as the leaves get bigger they can kind of catapult themselves onto it I don't know how that happens or how they do it but they do do it so what I've done this time instead is sort of protect the entire bed and make it like a, a, an entire minefield do you know what I mean? So that it's not just around each individual plant. Hopefully that will just give it a little bit more protection. Um, I do remember doing this last time with strolch and I strolched the entire bed and it worked a lot better than, than focusing on each plant. So hopefully, hopefully, and I've got to try and put that net back over because I can hear the birds. The birds are excited. They think, oh my goodness, look at that delicious meal. No birds, no. Not one bit. My net's so fiddly. <laughs> Why can't they make an unfiddly net? Oh, that would be an invention I'd buy. So, when I first started on this allotment plot, I saw a lot of weird things. I saw a lot of people doing very strange things, um, like watering cardboard, for instance. And most of these things I now do myself because it's desperate for my broad beans. You're not having them. No. I've ended up doing most of these things myself because I've realised as I've got into gardening just how important they are to do and how like genius they are, like genius hacks. One of the things that I've seen all around the allotment plot is this blue piping stuff. And when I was in b and the other day, I found it. I've never seen this before, but it's water pipe. I didn't even know what it was. People put this over their raised beds to like put their nets over and it's a really ingenious hack. So I'm gonna give it a go today. I just thought it was genius. So let's have a look how much I brought because I don't even understand the lengths. So I didn't really understand how long it was when I was looking at it. I did want to ask the guy in the store if I could just unwind it and have a look how long it was, but I didn't think he'd be too impressed with that. I'm more of a visual person when it comes to how long something is, do you know what I mean? I need to physically see it um, to know, but anyway, this one was £27. So this is not cheap, cheap investment, but from what I've seen around the allotment plots, it works really, really well at holding your netting up. 
and it lasts because people have just kept, kept them for years and all of my netting um, I usually just put over canes and it all falls down so I thought well maybe it's time to invest in something a little bit more sturdy I'm proud of myself this year I'd never have thought that last year last year I'd be like now nah, we'll just make do we'll just cry when everything gets eaten Long, it? <laughs> it's quite bendy. <laughs> I can't remember if I told you what it was. It's water pipe. It's called pipeline. And it's like, I think it's for cold water, but don't quote me on that. Never ask me to do your plumbing. Never ask me to do your plumbing. Um, I wouldn't have a clue. But apparently it's water pipe. So this is the smallest size they did. I think it's plenty. No idea is it's going to go over my bed like that. I thought I'd be able to cut it with scissors, but it's far too strong, so I'm going to have to get my saw out. I'm going to have to measure it, I think. Right, okay, I, I don't know how to do this. I'm just going to make it up. The thing is, when I saw people doing it, it doesn't look that hard. it sort of off the top of, I'm just going to sort of measure it visually I'm going to do it visually we'll just do it visually I don't know what that means it sounds impressive right right over Let's see. about there we'll trial one and we'll see what it looks like and then we'll put we'll cut the others that's what we'll do Everyone's looks like that's it. Oh, it's amazing. How many do you reckon I need? I reckon I need one, two, three, four. I reckon I need four, right? Right, so what we'll do is we'll measure all the rest against that one. Yeah, it's cool, man. I love it when stuff works. This is something that's going to go right first time. I can feel it. I can feel it. Four years of this, not better.
can we all just take a minute to appreciate the fact that I came up with an idea, didn't know how to do it, used my common sense, and it's worked. I mean, this is amazing. It looks great. Right, next thing to do is to cover it in netting. So, a few weeks ago, I was very kindly gifted some netting from Andermatt, which is called an insecto net. Um, and the thing that's different about this is that it's completely plastic free. So it's a natural and mighty plastic free insect net. Um, and an insect net is important for brassicas because of these little guys, cabbage white butterflies. Um, and basically they lay cats, they lay, the butterflies lay eggs, the eggs turn into caterpillars and the caterpillars eat your entire crop in like the space of two minutes, um, which is really, really frustrating. So you have to protect against the butterflies. The butterflies are the ones that cause you distress basically. And this net is great. It's completely plastic free. Like I said, I think it's fantastic. We love anything plastic free at this plot at the moment. I'm sick of plastic. I still find plastic now after four years of being here and I hate it. <coughs> right. Oh, it feels really good. I could sleep in that. It feels amazing. As you can see, it's a very, very, very fine net. Um, it's like netting. It reminds me of my nan. My nan used to have like netting up at the window like that. Um, very, very fine. So it won't allow any caterpillars or any butterflies in at all. Look at that. That is absolutely fantastic. I if I covered myself in that, <laughs> like a ghost. <laughs> right, let's see if my construction has worked. It's massive. It's good, isn't it? I tell you what, that ain't bad, is it? No caterpillar or but butterflies. I keep saying caterpillars, it's butterflies, butterflies. No butterfly is going to get in that. That is amazing. I want to get in that. That's like a tent. I want to get in that. If my little boy was here right now, he'd be in there with a campfire and everything. I hate cutting nets. It's one of my top least favourite things to do is cutting nets at all. I just don't have the patience to make it neat. I think I'll just um, secure it down with some rocks and stuff, but this looks amazing. No butterfly is going to get in that. That is just brilliant. Um, so it's not plastic. What it is, is... Oh, it's made from plants. Okay, so it's very environmentally friendly. Obviously, it's got no plastic in it. And the plastic that's usually made um, used in these um, nettings is called petroleum petroleum which is actually really really bad for the environment and this doesn't use that so that's excellent um, it lasts for at least two years and it biodegrades after use so if it ends up blowing away in a storm I guess you don't have to worry too much because you know it's going to biodegrade in the end which is just brilliant it's a very fine mesh it's 0.85 millimeters and it protects against many pests and insects it doesn't in interfere with light or airflow and I can see that immediately because it's definitely light enough to see through and there's definitely air going through it, so that's excellent. Um, it says it's easy to adjust size and shape with scissors. Well, unless you're me. <laughs> I always find that really difficult. Um, yeah, and it's just, it looks fantastic. Oh, also you can feed and water your plants through the netting, so you don't even have to pull the netting up to water your plants through there, which is just brilliant. And so there we go, so that is Insecto Net insecto nets thank you very much for sending me that and i'll let you know how i get how i get on with it protecting my crops my brassicas are going to go in here but i didn't want to plant them out until i had the protection because i thought if i plant them out i won't protect them for at least a week and then they're kind of susceptible to being eaten so i wanted to get my structure up first i'm absolutely chuffed with that i really am i mean look at it looking at it now it looks a little bit weird it's like a caterpillar um, I think I was right to use four because I didn't want it going in the middle and I wonder if it's tall enough to because purple sprouting broccoli is going to go in there and that's quite a tall plant if it's not tall enough I, there might be a way of making it a bit taller um, but I think it might be I think it might be but I'm really happy with how it's worked out it's definitely going to protect them isn't it brilliant <laughs> Oh,
Obviously you can hear a lot of building work has started now so I'm going to love you and leave you and leave the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it today, I hope it's given you some inspiration, I hope it's made you think that you can do stuff and not to be afraid to try. I've never done that before, I sort of just logically in my head figured out how to do it and I just went for it and this time it worked out and that's the thing about it, you don't know when it's going to work and when it doesn't and when it doesn't work at least you've learned how not to do it and then you can figure out how to do it. So. That's just the way it goes and I hope I've inspired you to get out there and your allotment plot and just give stuff a go, whack stuff in the ground, see what grows, see what comes up. Have a lovely gardening week. I will see you again on Wednesday with another allotment vlog. See you Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.